Hello again. Yes, a maiden Premier League title for Bayswater City SC in the last round of the regular season. And they did it after going 1-0 down against Bunbury. In a moment, we'll bring you the highlights and reaction from Bayswater City SC's win. We'll also pay tribute to Tony Rapinaro, one of the founding members of the Perth Entertainers. And we catch up with Perth Glory young gun, Brandon O'Neill. Well, Bayswater City SC have had to wait for decades for their first Premier League title. It's been a quarter of a century since the last trophy in top flight football, 1987's Night Series. Let's take a look at how the boys celebrated their win, marking a major milestone in their club's history. Under a glazing sun, conditions were perfect at Payne Park as Bayswater travelled to the southwest, searching for their first Premier League title. The fans were all smiles and joyful before the kickoff. But the happiness soon turned into sadness. In the 22nd minute, Bunbury's Ababio drew first blood. <laughs> Bunbury won, Bayswater nil. It was good news for second place Torrento, who were facing Bowcatter at Grindleford Reserve. The Gulls were looking for a win to leapfrog Bayswater and finish in top spot. But that too wasn't going to plan. Bowcatter's Callum Roberts opened the score in the seventh minute with a delightful loop over Sorrento's keeper. Yeah! Bowcatter won, Sorrento nil. The goals were on the back foot again minutes later. This time it was young Barrera who put the home side two goals up. <laughs> Meantime, back in Bunbury, things were looking up for Basie. Bunbury's goalkeeper was sent off after handling the ball outside the box. Bunbury now reduced to 10 men. It was a break Bayswater needed, and not before too long, their Colombian marvel Gustavo Marulanda levelled the scores. Back in Perth, two goals down, and Sorrento resorted to the long ball tactic, throwing its tall timber in Steve McDonald and Jamie Harnwell up front. The move soon paid off. Harnwell, as he's done so often this year, used his height and scored from a set piece. In the second half, the goals pressed on and in the 59th minute, Sorrento scored again. Johnny Mirko sending the ball home from a scrappy corner. Scores locked at 2 all. Could Sorrento cause an upset? Down south, Bunbury's Danny Kane gave away a penalty and was sent off after he continued to argue. Bunbury were down to nine men. It was a break Bayswater were looking for and up stepped Marulanda again to slot the ball home. Bayswater 2, Bunbury 1. Two all between Balcatta and Sorrento and the home side was looking to regain the ascendancy and it didn't take too long before they hit back. Ashley Rosendale netted the ball through for Balcatta's third in the 62nd minute. Balcatta had played some exquisite football during the day and five minutes later, some good passing resulted in the team's fourth. Callum Roberts on the score sheet again. Balcatta four, Sorrento two. But as they've done all season, Sorrento pushed on with grit and determination. Ryan Pearson gave Sorrento their third after a hard fought through run. But Sorrento's fate was sealed. Back down in Bunbury, Gustavo Morolanda got a hat trick after scoring from this free kick. For Bunbury, it was a day they'd rather forget after their third player was sent off. Bayswater's Damien Catalano took the penalty kick, slotted the ball home for the team's fourth and sent the travelling Baysy fans into a frenzy. Scoring three goals in the final match and giving the title to my club is, is the best you can dream. I mean, I couldn't ask for any more. That's, that's all I can get. Obviously, your fan base here was very vocal all game. Um, do you want to say anything to them before we go? Look, they helped us a lot this year. Uh, we, we have probably, with Floreth, we have probably the best crowd in, the list, in this league. They are great for them. We used to say in Italy that you have, when you have a crowd like this, you've got 12 players on the field. And that was the case today. Meantime, let's take a look at how the other teams fared on the last round of the season. Ashley Morrison has the details.
In this, the final weekend of the league season, Bayswater City's 4-1 win over Bunbury Forum Force saw them crowned league premiers for 2012. Two goals from Callum Roberts meant Balcata stunned Sorrento, defeating them 4-3 and ending their title hopes, while the Western Knights' relegation was emphatically confirmed as they capitulated to Joondalup 8-2, Tanner Sawyer netting four times. So looking at the league ladder, Bayswater deservedly sit top of the pile, having won two more games than second place Florida Athena, while Sorrento, Inglewood and Perth secure the other finals spots. The first weekend of the finals will see Inglewood play Perth in the elimination final, with, as you would expect, the loser's season being brought to a close. While in the qualifying final, Florida Athena plays Sorrento, with the winner to face Bayswater City next week, and the loser the winner of the elimination final. He's a rising star who skyrocketed to fame in the highest league at just the tender age of 18. I'm talking about Perth Glory's young gun, Brandon O'Neill. Been joining Perth, I started off at ECU Joondalup at young age, under 10s, under 11s. And then from there I progressed through the, the Junior Academy, um, right up until the seniors, and then made my debut for ECU First Team at 15. And then pretty much from there just um, went on trials with um, the youth team, with Gareth Navin. Um, and progressed through him and then um, I was lucky enough last year to be brought into the first team squad. The rest is kind of history now, I've got my first professional contract which I've worked hard for and hopefully I can get um, go onwards and upwards from here. I'm always grateful to have this opportunity and um, yeah, it's just a dream come true to wake up and do what, do what you, you love doing for the rest of your life. The experience under Paul Oakon, is, it's all improving your game, I would imagine. Oh, definitely, yeah. To be um, like adaptable, say, to any coach and any coaching style, it, it, it always helps you as a player as well. But just to, yeah, just to be like made aware of there's different styles out there, different different ways of thinking to football, it's it's brilliant. And just to even experience type, like how a national team goes about, like what you do before game and what you do after the game, and just just the whole atmosphere. Um, of an international call-up in a squad, it was just unbelievable. Well, here at Perth Glory, we thought we'd practice some of the things that make QBE great, like 125 years of experience. We trolled a new fraud replacement policy. Can I have a... Uh... Thanks, Bess. And comprehensive cover? Well, that seemed like a pretty good idea too. Turns out, what's great for your insurance, not so good for football. QBE. See how competitive we are with your insurance. The Perth entertainers have been part of football in WA for more than 30 years. And as Monica Beasley reports, the club recently held a tribute match for one of its founding members, Tony Rapinaro. Tonight's game of football between the Perth entertainers and Thailand over 50s is not just for the love of the game. It's dedicated to the memory of Perth soccer legend Tony Rapinaro. Tony was responsible for setting up the Perth entertainers 32 years ago. The group now boasts many ex-state soccer celebrities, Hall of Fame inductees and also an Iranian international. The team have been meeting every Wednesday night for the past 32 years for a kickabout, followed by a lot of socialising. With that in mind, do the Perth entertainers have what it takes to beat the Thailand Masters and take home the Tony Rapinaro Cup? has kept the group together for so long. 32 years is a very long time. The main thing really that kept us together is the passion of football. Everyone loves the game, every game the best game in the world, without any doubt. Every Wednesday night is a, is a call. Doesn't matter if you're sick or you, you come back, you want to go and you want to be there. You want to be there, especially the after training. It's probably the best bit, yeah. 
tell us about Tony Rapinara and why he's so special to this team. It's very, no, it's impossible to start it with one word. It was a unique bloke and by calling the cup of Tutti Capi, the chief of all chiefs, got nothing to do with mafia. It's just that whatever Tony said, we did. And you know, and to keep the entertainers together for that long, it must have been a special man. Every time we have the seniors World Cup in Thailand, we have the team from Australia. So I think it is about time for us to come to play together because uh, so far they just come to my country and play in my country and never come here. Tell us about the, the quality of your team. I've been watching them warm up. They look very fit. 50% <laughs> of them used to play for Thailand national team and 50% uh, play for the provincial team, something like that. We play almost every day and we plan every year to go overseas. Like after we finish this, we go to Hong Kong, we go to Macau and next year we be, go to Tulin in Italy. We have planned in the future already, so they have to keep theirself, themselves fit all the time. Great game with a lot of determination and spirit displayed from both sides. But with the eldest player being in his 70s, a real testament that you can play this game at any age. But the real highlight tonight is the fact that they are maintaining relationships and keeping this great game accessible to all our senior players. Football West Chief Executive Peter Hugg recently visited the outlying regions of Broome and Kalgoorlie where he met with local football representatives regarding their requirements of ongoing support from the state's governing body. Whilst in Broome, he spoke with the local office of the Department of Sport and Recreation and the Broome Soccer Association, at the same time as visiting a training and skills session at the Broome Recreation and Aquatic Centre. This was replicated in Kalgoorlie later that week. Football West is looking to provide financial support to these and other regions for the employment of local administrative and development officers on the ground. And that wraps up another busy webisode for Football 360 this week. Congratulations once again to Bayswater City SC on snatching their maiden Premier League title. The race is on now to the finals. We'll be back again next week. Until then, bye for now.